we're going to cover section 2.6 in our BJU Press pre-calculus textbook. So we're going to be discussing zeros of polynomial functions. So um, our objectives are to remember how to find the zeros of polynomials with rational conjugate or con uh, conjugate real or conjugate complex zeros. Um, and then we're also going to create polynomials that satisfy given conditions. Um, so let's consider this polynomial, 2x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. If we factor that polynomial, we get 2x plus 3 um, times x minus 2. And then of, according to our zero property law, that means the zeros are x equals 2 and x equals negative 3 halves. Um, so remember that property says that once you have something equal to zero, you can set both things equal to zero and then solve for x to find the zeros of the function. So x minus 2 equals zero, you add 2 to both sides, and you get x equals 2. 2x two plus, two plus 3 equals zero, you subtract 3 from both sides and you divide by 2, and you get x equals negative 3 halves. So these are the zeros of this polynomial, which we also call the roots of this polynomial. So notice that the numerators 2 and negative 3 are factors of the constant term, which is negative 6. And then notice that the denominators 1, because 2 over 1 is still 2, and 2 are factors of the leading coefficient 2. Well, that is not a coincidence. Let's find possible rational zeros of p of x equals 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus 7x plus 5. So according to what we just said, our numerator needs to be factors of our constant term, 5. So let's, let, let's find um, factors of our constant term. So Factors of 5 would be plus or minus 1 and plus and 1 minus 5. Um, and then for our denominator, we want factors of our leading coefficient, which for this polynomial was 4. So our factors of 4 are 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. So factors of the leading coefficient 4 is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4 which means our possible rational zeros, which we're going to, from now on, represent with c over d, is plus or minus 1, plus or minus, which we got from 1 over 1, plus or minus 5 over 1, which is 5 over 1, plus or minus 1 over 2, which we got from 1 over 2. 2 plus or minus 5 over 2, which we got from 5 over 2, plus or minus 1 over 4, which we got from 1 and 4, and then lastly, plus or minus 5 over 4, which we got from 5 over 4. So you do every single scenario. So this theorem that we have just shown is called the rational root theorem, which says that if you have a polynomial where the coefficients are integers, um, then c over d is a reduced rational root of p of x equals 0. Then c is a factor of your constant term, which is a naught, and d is a factor of your leading coefficient, which was the a sub n. So the only possible rational roots of a polynomial are in the form c over d, right? Where c is a factor of the constant term and d is a factor of your leading coefficient. So that helps us when we have to factor a higher polynomial. Let's say we want to find the roots of 6x cubed minus 5x squared minus 2x plus 1. We could just start randomly picking numbers to use synthetic division. Or we can find our possible roots and then test those numbers using synthetic division. Um, so we know that our numerator is a factor of our constant term, which is 1. So that means our c is plus or minus 1. 
then D is a factor of our leading coefficient, which is 6. So the factors for 6 are plus or minus 1 and 6, plus and minus 2 and 3. So then we put C over D in all possible combinations. So we get plus or minus 1 over 1, which is 1, plus or minus 1 over 2, plus or minus 1 over 3, and then plus or minus 1 over 6. So those are all possible roots. So then we start testing them using synthetic division. Um, it might take a while to find one that works, but we know that our roots have to be some of these answers. Those are the only possible roots. Um, so we use synthetic division. We're going to go ahead and test one. Um, and when we test it, we end up that one works. Okay, so remember one is our a value, which means one of our factors is x minus one, because remember, um, this is an a value, and that means our factor is x minus a, so we have x minus 1. And we're left with 6x squared plus 1x minus x. Okay, of course we have a remainder of 0 because x minus 1 worked. If, um, if you had a remainder, then that means that x minus 1 is not a root, which means that you have to start all over and pick another c over d. Um, but this one worked. So now we need to factor 6x squared plus x minus 1, which factors into 2x plus 1 and 3x minus 1. Now that we have our three factors, we set each one equal to 0, and we get our roots, which is 1, negative 1 half, because we minus 1 and divide by 2, and then 1 third, because we add 1 and then divide by 3. Um, so let's do this one where we have x to the fourth plus 9x cubed plus 15x squared plus 9x plus 14. So first we have to find c over d. Um, so our possible roots of our constant over our possible roots of our leading coefficient. So we have plus or minus 1, 2, 7, and 14. So when we do that, um, we are going to go ahead and test some of our possible C over Ds. Let's start with negative 2 and see if that works. And it does, because we get remainder 0. Now, if we did not get a remainder of 0, that means that minus 2 is not an A value, which means that we would have to keep testing different numbers until we got a remainder of 0. Um, but we did. So since x minus 2, it, since minus 2 is an A value, we want to say x minus A. So that would be x minus negative 2, which is the same as saying x plus 2. And then we're left with x cubed plus 7x squared plus x plus 7. So then we had to factor this x cubed plus 7x squared plus x plus 7. Um, so we're going to go ahead and factor out um, an x squared here. So we end up with x squared times x plus 7. And then we have an x plus 7 here. So then we can factor out an x plus 7, and we're left with x squared plus 1. So then we can we have these three factors. So when we solve for those three factors, um, we're going to subtract 2 here and get x minus 2. We're going to subtract 7 here, and we get negative 7. And this one we're going to subtract 1, and then we're going to take the square root of it. So we get plus or minus the square root of negative 1, which is um, i and negative i. Okay, so when we did the rational root theorem, the c over d, um, our coefficients had to be um, integral, so they could not be fractions. Um, however, we can still use it even if our coefficients are fractions. We just have to do what's called eliminating the fraction or killing the fraction.
let's say we have x cubed minus 13 over 12 x squared plus 3 eighths x minus 1 over 24. So we want to kill our fraction, so we're going to multiply everything by our least common denominator, which is 24. So we're going to multiply everything by 24, and when we do that, we end up with 24 p of x equals 24 x cubed minus 26 x squared plus 9 x minus 1. So now we can find our possible c over d. So our factors of 1 are 1 plus or minus 1, and our factors of our leading coefficient 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. So our possible c over d are all these possible answers. And use synthetic division, and we find out, oh, an a value of 1 half works, and it doesn't give us any remainder, which means x minus 1 half is a factor. And it leaves us, looking at our synthetic div division, it leaves us 24x squared minus 14x plus 2, um, which from there we're going to go ahead and factor out a 2. So we are going to factor out a 2. Um, and when we factor out a 2, we have 12x squared minus 7x plus 1, which factors into 3x minus 1 and 4x minus 1. So now we have 24p of x is equal to 2 times x minus 1 half. Remember, we got the 1 half from using synthetic division. And then 3x minus 1 times 4x minus 1. So we, got, we had to divide by this 24 now, um, so that way we can set our equation equal to 0. So 2 divided by 24 is 1 12th. So now we're going to um, set everything equal to 0. So we add 1 half to both sides, so x is 1 half. Um, we add 1 and then we divide by 3, so x is 1 third. And then we add 1 and divide by 4, so x is 1 fourth. So we have something called the conjugate root theorem, which says that if you have a complex number a plus bi as a root, then its conjugate, which is a minus bi, is also a root. The same thing works for rational coefficients or radicals. Think of radicals. If you have a plus c square root of b is a root, then a minus c square root of b is also a root. So if this polynomial x to the fourth plus x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 2 has negative i as one of its roots, find the other roots. Well, if negative i is a root, then its conjugate plus i has to be a root. Um, and so if those are two of the roots, that means that we have x plus i times x minus i. And then we also need to multiply by something different. So we need to figure out what else are we multiplying by. So let's go ahead and multiply x plus i times x minus i, which is x squared plus 1. And then what we can do is we can use long division, and we can divide x to the fourth plus x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 2. Let's divide that by x squared plus 1 and we end up with x squared plus x minus 2, which we can then factor into x plus 2 and x minus 1. So now we can find the roots. Um, we have negative i, we have i, negative 2, and 1. So we have something called the fundamental theorem of algebra, which basically says that if you have a polynomial and its degree is greater than zero, you have at least one root in the complex number system. Um, in fact, you have something also called the complete linear factorization theorem, which says that if you have your polynomial of degree n is going to be factored into n linear factors. Some of those factors can repeat themselves, but you're always going to have n number of factors where n is the degree of the leading coefficient. 
So let's say we have x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 8x minus 4. Just knowing that this is a degree 4 tells me I'm going to have four factors. Some of them might repeat themselves, but I'm definitely going to have four factors. Um, so I, when I factor this out, I end up with x minus 1 squared times x squared minus 4. Um, and then x squared minus 4 factors into x minus 2, x plus 2. So you notice how I ended up with four factors. There's two factors here. x minus 1 repeats itself. And then there's x minus 2 and x plus 2. Um, which means my zeros are 1 with a multiplicity of 2 because this occurred twice. And then I have 2, and then I have negative 2. So suppose we have a polynomial, and the roots are 0, 2 thirds, 1 plus the square root of 2, and 3 minus 2i. If 0 has a root of multiplicity 3, what is the least possibility of p of x? Write a polynomial that satisfies these conditions. Well, we already know that 0 has 3 as a multiplicity of 3. So we know how we, we, we at least have a degree 3. Here's another root, so that's a degree 4. Here's another root, so it's a degree 5. But it's, a, it's going to have a conjugate, which means it's a degree 6. Here's a degree 7, plus its conjugate gives us a degree 8. So we know we're going to have at least a degree 8, at least a degree 8. So let's go ahead and find a polynomial that satisfies that condition. So we know that x minus 0 um, happens three times, which means x cubed is a factor. We also know that 2 thirds is a root, so we have x minus 2 thirds. Um, we do want to go ahead and kill that fraction, so we're going to say 3x minus 2 is a factor. What we did is we basically we multiplied by 3, so we wouldn't have to deal with that fraction. Um, and since 1 plus the square root of 2 is a factor, we know that their conjugate was a factor, 1 minus the square root of 2. When we multiply these two, two factors, x minus 1 plus the square root of 2 times x minus 1 minus the square root of 2, we end up with x squared minus 2x minus 1 as a factor. And then likewise, when we do the same thing with that complex number, one of our factors was x minus 3 minus 2i, which means that we also have the conjugate x minus 3 plus 2i. When we multiply them together, we get x squared minus 6x plus 13. So putting that all together, we have that x cubed from the zeros, we have the 3x minus 2 from the 2 thirds, then we have the x squared minus 2x minus 1 from the radical, and then we have the x squared minus 6x plus 13 from the imaginary number. So our very last thing we want to do is we want to multiply all of that together. So we'll start with multiplying these two, x cubed times 3x is 3x to the fourth, x cubed times negative 2 is negative 2 x cubed. And then we'll go ahead and multiply these two factors together. You can use your box method for that. And then once you have, and then you're going to multiply this, this binomial by this polynomial. Again, box method is the best way to go. And we end up with this super long polynomial. Um, and notice that I was right. It is a degree 8. So that is it for your examples. Go ahead and try the problems yourself.